Bestie, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be talking about my top 17 books of 2017. I'm so excited to finally be filming this video. I feel like I'm late to the game. Everybody's already got their top books and worst book videos up, but here's me just doing it now. I wanted to wait till completely the end of 2017 and I do that every year, so. Anyways, um, I hope you guys are gonna watch this and I'm not too late, but little disclaimer, these are my favorite books of the year, but they weren't all published in 2017 and we are gonna be talking about them in like order from 17 to 1, so essentially my least favorite to my very, very favorite, but I loved all these books. I didn't read a lot of five star books this year. Um, I read a lot of three stars and I read quite a few fours, but anything that really stuck out to me is on this list and here we go. Coming in at number 17, I have Saving My Assassin by Virginia Prodan. This is the author's memoir. She is a human rights activist in Dallas, Texas, but this is about when she was in Romania basically fighting for the right to express people's religion. Did I say that right? I hope so. But anyways, um, she was in Romania at a time where Christianity was not allowed, the government was not allowing people to practice their religion, people were dying over it, being killed, put in jail, but this brave lady fought for those rights and she actually had an assassin sent after her and the ending of this book was so insane, I could not believe it. This book taught me so much about why people cling to their faiths and beliefs so much and it really inspired me to maybe seek that out in my life. Would highly recommend people reading this. It was so, so good. Coming in at number 16, I have The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Mass. This is the pre Throne of Glass novella bind up. What's funny is I never meant to read this. I was like, I'm not reading novellas, screw that. But I'm so happy I read this because it really pieced Throne of Glass together even better for me. And I love pre Throne of Glass Selena. I love how um, I found out how she became who she was, and I loved Sam. If you've read this book, you know who I'm talking about. I love Sam, and the ending really crushed me in this novella bind-up because of Sam. I'm gonna stop talking about Sam now, but yes, definitely one of the best books I read this year. Falling in at number 15, I have The Best Kind of People by Zoe Whittell. Another kind of surprise. I had never really heard about this book, saw it in chapters, picked it up, and I read it and I really enjoyed it. This is about a man who is a very loved man in his community. He's a loved father, he is a teacher, and he's just all around a really great guy until he gets accused of sexually assaulting a few girls on a ski trip he is chaperoning. The rest of the story is about how his family, his daughter, his son, and his wife deal with the events and the craziness that comes in this community. I thought this book was really, really good. Um, it really touched my heart and after I read this book, I could not stop thinking about the characters. There was so much emotion and it just was, it was really, really good. That's all I can really say. I really enjoyed it. Coming in at number 14 is a recent read, and that is The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. I am so happy I read this book this year. It was short, but it really packed a punch. This is about four teenagers in Alaska and how their stories all intertwine. I'm not gonna go too deep into their stories because I don't want to spoil, but this book was written so well. I love the setting of Alaska, and it just dealt with a lot of really hard topics that a lot of books don't deal with. I'm not sure if it's YA or adult, but I would highly recommend every good one going and read this. It deals with alcoholism, adoption, teen pregnancy, um, basically finding out who you are. It deals with death. It deals with running away. And the fact that it's set in Alaska, I just want to say, is so amazing. I love books set in Alaska, but yes, definitely one of my top books of the year for sure. Number 13 on this list is also a recent read for me, and that is Far From the Tree by Robin Benway. I read this in December. I had no intentions to. I ordered it. It came in the mail, and then I forgot other books, and I brought this on a road trip, and I'm so happy I did, because I absolutely love this. This is about three teenagers who all have the same mother but different fathers. Um, they were all put into the adoption system when they were very, very young, and now they are finding each other and finding out who their mother is. Um, it deals with teen pregnancy. Pregnancy. We have an LGBTQIA plus character and we have a biracial character as well and all of their struggles are very very written well. Um, they're all very realistic. I feel like a lot of people could relate to this story um, and we also see a lot of the children's um, adoptive or foster parents as well which I really appreciated. We don't see enough of that in YA. The end of this book made me cry. Um, I feel like all of the characters in this book who were teenagers acted like teenagers and they acted realistically as well which I really appreciated and they were quite level-headed which I love 
loved because there are teenagers out there who are extremely level-headed. Um, it is not an own voices novel, I will put that out there, but it was still written very well. I think Robin Benway really took her time with this one. Um, it's probably the best YA I have read in a really long time, and I just, yeah, it was so, so good. If you haven't read it yet, I would highly recommend it. Number 12 is Do Not Become Alarmed by Mally Me Loy. Now, I'm gonna put this in the thriller category, but if you haven't read a lot of thrillers, start out with this one. So this is about two families who go on a cruise ship, um, and they go off the cruise ship for the day, and the mothers take the kids to this random beach, and the kids go missing. That's all I'm gonna say, and then we have two perspectives. We have the kids, who are missing and then we have the parents trying to find them and you get equal amounts of the two perspectives and it was so freaking good I enjoyed it so much I couldn't wait to find out what happened to these kids and it kept me reading it wasn't like a crazy thriller but it was definitely thrilling and I would highly recommend you go and read this definitely one of my top books of the year next on my list is Carrie by Stephen King this was my first Stephen King novel so no wonder it made it on this list this is about a girl named Carrie who has telekinesis powers she goes to the prom and it's a joke for some people and chaos happens. That's all I'm gonna say. This is Stephen King's first novel, so I thought it was kind of neat how it was my first Stephen King novel. I enjoyed it so much. It was thrilling. It was a horror book, and oh, it was just, it kept me on my toes, and I loved it so much. I love Stephen King's writing, and I'm definitely gonna be reading more of his books, so 2018, I bet you will have some of his books in my top list. Coming in at number 10, I have George by Alex Gino, the one of the only middle grade books I read this year, but this book made me fall in love with diverse and own voices middle grade. Um, I'm so happy I read this book. I learned so much about um, the transgender community and what it's like to be transgender, and I just, I loved it so much. In this book, we are following George, who was born a boy, but she is a girl, and what is going on is she wants to be in the school play, and she wants to play Charlotte, but the school won't let her because she looks like a boy on the outside, and um, it's all about how her family deals with all this, how her friends help her out, and uh, it just, it was really heartwarming at the end, and I loved this so much. If you haven't read it, definitely check it out. Number nine is a book I read early on in the year, but this book has stuck with me all year, and that is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. I read this in, I believe, January for Diversathon, and I love this book so much. In this book, we are following a Chinese-American family, and their daughter goes missing, and the story is told through all their perspectives of, like, their, it's basically their life story. They're going over their whole entire life while they're trying to find their missing daughter. It's not a thriller by any means and it deals with so many issues. It deals with women's rights. It deals with racism. Oh, it just deals with so much. I did a full review on it. I will link that down below. I love this book so much um, and I'm surprised I did because a lot of people think this book is slow but to me it just taught me so much and I just I can't get enough of Celesting. I really truly can't. Coming in at number eight I have Empire of Storms by Sarah J. Mass. What can I even say? This book was so freaking good. I loved it so much. I'm not gonna go into too much like detail about it because I don't want to spoil the whole series, but this book was prop this book is my favorite of the series so far. I loved Queen of Shadows, I love Terrifier, but this this was so freaking so good. I have a review for it, I'll link it down below. Uh, but I just Lysandra and everyone and especially Lysandra. Oh my god, I just all I have to say is I love this book. That's all I have to say about it. Like, I can't say anything else. Go check out my review, but yes. So good. Definitely one of my top books of the year. Next up is a book that a lot of people might give me heat for, but I stand really strong with my views on this book, and that is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. Now, why this book made my top list is because it taught me something. Um, it opened my eyes up to why people stay in abusive relationships. That's what this book is about. That's all I'm going to say trigger warning if that is a trigger for you, but this book taught me so much. It shifted my feelings on a lot of stuff and opened my eyes, and I can't say that enough. Um, it emotionally manipulated me, so if you don't like books like that, do not read this, but I didn't mind it. It was crazy how this book made me feel, and just the fact that it could do that to me and shift my views on something and teach me something, that is why it's on my top books of 2017 lists. 
Moving right along, I have another memoir, and that is North of Normal by Sia Sunrise Pearson. I read this, I believe, in March of this year, and what I, I just really enjoyed it. Like, this book is about a girl who lived a very call to her counter lifestyle. She lived in the Canadian wilderness with a mom who smoked a lot of weed, had sex in front of her, they ran around naked, um, they weren't really in a stable environment, she didn't really go to school. Very, very countercultural. It was in like the 1960s, 70s, so kind of the hippie phase. And it's about her basically kind of getting over her childhood because she was a bit traumatized and becoming the woman she was today. Uh, I really liked it because it was about a Canadian and it just, it was really cool to read about. It was like crazy how some people live like this. And she did write a second book. I don't know if I'm going to go read it though because I think she's trying to milk it a little too much. But yeah, definitely one of my favorite books of the year. Now we're moving into the final five. This is where things get crazy and I might not be able to say proper words and just be like, ah, I love these books. <laughs> but coming in at number five, I have Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. Just Lady Midnight. This is book one in her Dark Artifices series and we're following Blackthorn children after the events of the Moral Instruments. Um, they live at the LA Institute. That is where this book is set. <sighs> and I just can't say anything else. Like, this book was so good. I feel like if I talk too much, I'm gonna spoil all the Shadowhunter books, but I feel like Cassandra Clare really hit the nail on the head with this one. She really progressed in her writing and her characters, and I just completely love this. I devoured it in four days. Sean would come home and be like, what'd you do today? And I'd hold up this book, and I'd still be in my PJs, in my bed, reading. There's some ships in here that are my favorite ships of all time. I tweeted a lot while I read this book. It was so good, um, and I, I can't wait for Queen of Air and Darkness now. Like, I cannot wait. Coming in at number four, I have Homegoing. Not gonna say the author's name, because I suck. But I read this for the Summer Biome Bibliothon, and I loved it so much. I'm so happy I read it. Um, it's about two girls from Africa, and they were born in the same village, and one, they get separated basically, and one goes to the America, and one stays in Africa, and it follows their families through, I believe, six generations, and it deals with basically black history. Um, you go through all these different time periods. You go from slavery in Africa, slavery in America, um, all kinds of great stuff, and it just wraps up really nicely at the end too, and I love reading multi-generation books, and this one taught me so much. It had me crying at times. It was so, so important, and I just, I freaking loved it. Like, it was so, it was so, so good. Coming in at number three, I have Little Fires Everywhere by Celesting. I had to read this this year, and it had to go on my list, but I feel like I can't give a super detailed synopsis because I feel like the more details I give with Celesting books, the more I spoil, and I don't want to do that. But just know this book is about a family, three families, and how an adoption affects them all, and it was so good. It also deals with abortion, teen pregnancy, te a lot of teenager problems, finding out who you are, dealing with relationships, um, a kind of counterculture lifestyle, living off an artist lifestyle, um, what else? It deals with so much and it was so unique and so freaking good and I think I'm gonna have to reread it. I was gonna make a review on this and I think I might and after I reread it, but yes, just the best. The final two. Oh my goodness. So coming in at number two, I have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book is about a old Hollywood starlet who wants her last memoir written, so she contacts a young girl to write it for her, and the memoir is told through her seven husbands. It is not like an actual memoir, but that's how it's told. It was so freaking good. I love this book so, so much. Um, I describe this book as a gossip column you can't put down. It was truly, truly amazing. And coming in at number one, if you've made it to the end of this video, you've probably guessed it, but that is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. If you've not read this book, where have you been? Go read this book. You should read this book. It is extremely important. What this book is about, you should know that though, because this book has been everywhere. Um, it's about a girl named Star Carter. She is black and she witnesses her best friend Khalil murdered by a white police officer by a gun and he had no reason to murder him. That starts basically the Black Lives Matter movement or a movement in this book very similar to the Black Lives Matter movement. That is what this book is based on. It is an own voices novel. It is so powerful and this book taught me so much as someone who is white and I grew up in a small town. I live in a small town. I did not experience these things at all. This book taught me so much. It was so eye-opening. I feel like I was ignorant before I read this book and 
I loved it. It was written so well. This is a debut novel for Angie Thomas and I can't believe it. She's an incredible writer and I just love Star. She is an amazing character. She's a very strong female character and all the characters in here were very good and it was just so incredible. It was written so well. I love the dynamics of Star's family in this book. You see so much of that and that's not done enough in YA. I could gush about this book forever. I'm probably going to reread it this year. I'm working on doing rereads for 2018 and I want to do a full out review. I cannot wait till the movie comes out. I will be in the theater the first day it comes out. I'll take the day off work if I'm working. But yes, such a good book. Five out of five stars for sure. If you haven't read this yet, please go read it. This was so good. Definitely my favorite book of 2017. All right, guys, and there you have it. Those are my top 17 books of 2017. I hope you enjoyed this video. Comment down below. Let me know your favorite books of the year. If you read any of these books, what you think of them. I'd love to chat to you in the comments. And stay tuned because my worst books of the year and my most disappointing books of the year are on their way. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Oh, 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 oh,